Hallelujah, Hallelujah, oh God, oh God. All the glory belongs to you, all the glory belongs to you, oh God. Let me hear you guys say that. Declare it to Jesus. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. Let me hear you say, all the glory belongs to you, God. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. All the glory belongs to you one more time. All the glory belongs to you. Hallelujah. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. The Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, those who love me will keep my word and my father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words and the word that you hear is not mine but is from the father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away. I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Please be seated in the Lord's prayer. Beloved, good morning. Good morning. It is a pleasure to stand before you this morning, the last time we did this, it was across a Zoom screen. So I think this is certainly preferable. I find myself preaching this morning from Revelation, which was already read for you. Let's have a moment of prayer. Spirit of the living God, lower this preacher now into the depths of your utter righteousness, that I might e emerge with a clear word for increasingly uncertain times. Many have come into this space asking the age-old question, is there a word from the Lord? Help folk to leave this place with absolute conviction saying, certainly there is a word from our God. Let everyone under the sound of my voice say hallelujah. hallelujah. And let everyone say amen. amen. Growing up, I was really afraid of the book of Revelation. <laughs> So the Left Behind series was really big at that time. And whenever I did something bad during the day, at night I would sneak into my grandmother's room to make sure she hadn't been raptured while I was sleeping. The, the book of Revelation was a very scary thing for me. 
But I have a degree in human and organizational development, so I bring an organizational theory perspective to things. So I want to bring those lenses to the book of Revelation. I want to bring those lenses to our text this morning. When you think about organizational theory, you're often thinking about a vision of where you want to go, a destination at which you want to arrive, a telos, an end goal to which you are driving. Your mission statement becomes the way that you operationalize this vision, the, the, the concrete things that you do to ensure that you arrive at that end goal. And then you have these goals, these planks, these things on to which you hold that help you fulfill the mission so that you can see the vision. What we are presented with here is a vision. And in the spirit, he, John of Patmos, carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. John is given the ability to have a vision of the second coming of Jesus Christ. And, and what we see here isn't something about which we need to be afraid, but something for which we ought to have a great deal of joy. I'm grateful to professors like Dr. Rossing and others who have taught us that eschatology isn't something that we ought to fear, but something that we embrace because it speaks to restoration and to healing. So let's talk about this vision that John has, this vision to which our church should be striving towards. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. Imagine that. No pews and no pulpits and no church buildings and no building committee. That There's no place of gathering because the whole city is filled with the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Think about that for a moment. We don't have to assemble in the building because what Bonhoeffer has said is true eschatologically, that Christ is not just king of the church, but king of the world and rocks every human kingship back on its heels by challenging us to rethink the way that we use and apportion power. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God is its light, and its lamp is the Lamb. The word of God is a light unto my feet and a lamp unto my path. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. What I love about this is that upon Christ's second coming, we see all of the nations retain their distinctiveness, their individuality, and their beauty. It's just that difference has become something beautiful rather than something ugly. Its gates will never be shut by day and there will be no light there. This is the message of Jesus upon his second coming. Open gates, open arms, and open heart. All who are willing can come in. This is the vision that we are working towards. And one last thing I want to uplift. People will bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations, but nothing unclean will enter it. I'm so glad this morning that God's kingdom is such that any person who wants to can enter it. But there are some patterns and some practices will not, which will not gain admission to this glorious kingdom. There's some discrimination and some sexism and some xenophobia. There's no room in this kingdom for that. The vision that God presents us with is a vision that brings all of God's children together in equity, justice, healing, and restoration. Amen. 
this, beloved, is our vision, the question must be asked, what is our mission? The vision with which we are presented this morning is not something over there for later. It's a vision that's right here for now. The kingdom or the family of God, the values of Christ, the way of living which subvert the ways in which power is put up over and against love and justice and mercy, these old ways of living, there is a better way, a freer way way. The vision that we are presented today cannot be fulfilled unless we answer the mission of operationalizing what we see in our text. And if you're going to operationalize a vision, you've got to have some goals. And I want to give two grounding goals from our text. The first grounding goal is this, keep the gates open. When we look across our nation, we see that the gates are being closed. When we look at anti-voting rights legislation sweeping the country, the gates are being closed. When we look at anti-trans legislation sweeping the country, the gates are being closed. When we look at the reproductive rights of those who menstruate being challenged by the nation's Supreme Court who used to advance liberty, not restrict it, the gates are being closed. So what are you going to do to open them and keep them open? That's the goal of Lighthouse Foundation through our signature racial equity initiative, the Black Queer Equity Index. It is about working with non-for-profits like AIDS Foundation of Chicago, Center on Halstead, Chicago House, Howard Brown Health, to ensure that they are keeping the gates open for black queer employees and board members, and by extension, black queer community members, patients, and clients. The gates must be kept open. But we not only want to keep the gates open if we're going to get to this vision that we're supposed to operationalize right now, but secondly, we got to keep the light on. Beloved, there is darkness all around us, but the message is to be the light. When we extinguish these candles, you should be lit because you are acolytes being dispatched into dark, desolate places with a gospel that brings light, that brings joy, that brings restoration, and that brings healing. And I'm so thankful to folks like Margie. I'm so thankful to folks like Anna. So thankful to folks like Carrie, members of Holy Trinity, who have been partnering with Lighthouse Foundation to keep the lights on. So, beloved, I hope that you will no longer see the book of Revelation as a thing to fear. And I want to leave you with this. It's the final word that Jesus offers at the end of the book of Revelation. It's an invitation. It says, come. And so those are the words that I leave you with this morning. Come for mimosas and cinnamon rolls. Come and hear how Holy Trinity is conspiring with Lighthouse Foundation to incite black queer liberation. Come and see how Christ is being continually resurrected. Come and see that the church is not dead. My friends, she's still alive.